Hello, so in this video I'm going to show you how I made the stencil for this circuit board here. Um, so you can see it has a bunch of small fine pitch TQFP packages. And uh, this was actually like the second stencil I ever made using this process. So it's super easy to do and works quite well. Um, so this is done with a hobby cutter. So the one I'm using is um, this Silhouette Cameo that you can just buy from Amazon or wherever. Um, so it just comes in a big box like that. And I'll just take you through briefly what was involved in setting it up. So here's the actual machine. Um, if you've ever used the old pen plotters that worked on a similar principle, it'll look very familiar, um, even to the point that so when we open it up uh, there's a what looks a lot like a pen from those old plotters and uh, instead what this is is it's actually a knife uh, that will move around and cut whatever the material is so you can just set the depth of the knife comes out so the maximum depth see if this will focus it sort of just peeks out, so, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't let you on an airplane with that, but I'm actually using the lowest setting one here um, for all this, this work, and this seems to work pretty well. So for a material to cut, I was originally using transparencies. Um, so this is what some people had recommended. So you could get these Apollo right on transparencies. Uh, which worked pretty well, but they were a bit thick. And someone else gave me the idea of getting from a craft supply store just a drafting mylar. Um, so this stuff is quite a bit thinner. I think it's about three mils thick. And uh, they just sold it by the sheet, so it's nice and it was, you know, like 90 cents per sheet. Um, so this is from a store in Canada, but I'm sure. I'm sure anywhere sells this stuff, and it was just called like drafting film, I believe. Um, so it was the part number. So this is just eight, eight and a half by eleven sheets. But to demonstrate, I'm just going to be using regular paper to avoid wasting that. So how the system works is it comes with this sheet, um, and the sheet has this this backing you pull off. Uh, once you pull off. The backing, this whole, everything's sticky, so whatever you stick to it will more or less uh, stay in place. And when you peel it off, it's nice because all the little bits will stick to the sheet and you can just scrape them off with a credit card or scraper or something. Uh, so if you have a dog, like I do, you've got to be careful because obviously if they get near this, lots of dog hair will go everywhere. Um, so now all I would do is line up. So if this was the drafting film, I don't think it really matters. Um, all my boards are way smaller than this. I would just line it up somewhere and press it down. Um, there we go. So I would turn this guy on and zoom in a bit. So you can watch other videos. I mean, they have a bunch on loading it, but basically there's some arrows here that you line up this sheet with and just hit load media. So the only thing to watch out is that it's going to, once we start running, it's gonna be spinning the sheet out the back and front as it moves it through. So I can leave that up so you can see the action. Um, and then on the software side, a bunch of people have basically written all the drivers and converters. So the only thing you really need to figure out is the appropriate cutting, uh, cutting force and speeds. And for doing this, the, you can get the software to print this test sheet, which basically shows you a cutting force of one, two, three, four, all the way up to the maximum of 30. And you might be able to see I force it to focus here. There we go. Um, so you can see that these ones 
at sort of the lower settings, you can see it actually didn't cut through this material. So you can see that it cut, but not hard enough. So it gave me some idea that, you know, I needed a cutting force around 10 or something like that. So for the stencil I showed you, um, here, I forget what I was using. I have it written down somewhere, but I think I did one pass with a low force. I used two passes. Uh, so one for pass with a force of like three and then one pass with 10 or something like that. And that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, if you're using a harder material, so here's the transparency, uh, what you'll find, get it to focus, is that you may need to adjust them. So here you can see that um, it's sort of hard to see because it's clear, but it took until, you know, 20 something before it finally broke for through. So the other ones weren't quite enough, it's sort of just barely breaking through. All right, anyway, so once this is loaded, uh, on the software side, we can basically just load a, uh, a Gerber and so the software I've just loaded a Gerber into the program and then I'm just gonna hit a button that converts it and then sends it. So I'll show you more details of that setup. Um. And that's it, so it takes quite a while to do the cutting. But you can basically just hang out and let it work. So, on the software side, what do you need to do? Um, the first thing to do is install the printer drivers because you need the Cameo to show up. If you go to the devices and printers type thing or printers um, on Windows, it needs to show up right here. And by default, it won't. So if you just, like me, you don't install from the CD and you just go download the latest version of the software from the website, um, that won't work. You actually don't even need the software that comes with it. What you do need is the drivers that make it show up as a standard Windows printer. Uh, so those are on the DVD, or I've put a zip file um, containing them. So basically the zip file has this stuff in it, and so you can install appropriately, whatever the version is. So do this before you plug the printer in. It'll be a lot easier than having to update the printer afterwards. So assuming you have that, you can just hit right-click on it, and some of those like share this printer. So open. So okay, printer sharing or properties. Uh, eventually you get to this window. Um, so there's an option to share the printer. The share name, I just gave it the name Cameo. You can do anything you want. Um, and we'll use the Windows print sharing to actually communicate with the printer itself. So after that's done, you can close it all out. The next step is to get a copy of the software. So you can just download, it's all Python based. So you first will have to install Python 2.7, I think it requires, um, using WinPython or something uh, like that. If you're on Windows, uh, so you install Python, you can clone the repository, so you can just hit download zip. Um, so the repository, this is my own uh, fork of the main one. So this is the, the main Pimata one. I've added a few small changes to the GUI. You don't actually need to use my version, but my version will add the uh, test forces option into the GUI, which I showed quickly in the other video. Um, so to get this working on Windows, basically you should be able to go to wherever you cloned it. Let me open that. So I cloned it here. And if I run this G2G underscore GUI, Pi. So if it doesn't work, you might uh, you might need to look up what dependencies you're missing. I don't know what all ones it requires, um, but you can just sort of look up a general Python tutorial. So you're going to have to install a few dependency programs uh, before it will actually work fully, but this window should appear at least. Um, so the next step is to go 
and I've got the list of instructions and I'll link to these. Um, so we need GERB-V, the Gerber viewer, um, PS2Edit, and whatever version, and GoScript. So you need to install these three programs um, if you don't already have them for some other reason. And same with PS2Edit. Um, so once you have all of this installed, when you run the the program, G2G GUI, uh, you then can set the path to your Gerber viewer. So I'm using 2.6.1, um, and so you just hit browse, set the path. Same thing with the PS2 edit. So your paths might be the same if you I have Windows 7 64-bit. Um, and that's the main things to set. You can then select whatever Gerber file you want. Um, and if you want to view it, so I've added this button. You won't have this button if you're not using uh, the forked version. And it just opens it. So this is the stencil layer from Eagle. Um, I found I probably should have reduced the width of these a little. I had a little too much paste on my stencil from the first time I tried. So in the future, I might try to make a script that does that. Um, anyway, so once you do that, uh, you'll just create a graph tech file from the input. So it'll appear here. And if everything works, you can look at this window and there shouldn't be any errors. Um, if, for example, you installed the wrong version or couldn't find something, you'll see that come up here. Uh, and that just generates a text file that's just a bunch of commands that it's going to send to the uh, graph tech machine itself. So it's just a huge file. We don't need that. As an alternative, so if you want to do that test squares uh, example I showed you, you can hit create test forces graph tech file. And this will create the same, this results.txt, which has the commands for just sending the all the squares um, to the machine at different forces. So then you can check uh, what forces you should use for cutting. So finally, when you're ready to cut, you just hit the send graph tech file to cutter. So this could be either the test forces file or the file from the Gerber, it doesn't matter. Um, so it'll send it and then it'll say, do you want to cut? And you hit yes, and that's it. So it's pretty easy. Um, before you exit, you would want to hit save configuration. It just saves all the paths. Um, so you can play around with uh, various options. There's more documentation, but for example, the, the border you can disable if you want. Um, the force here, so this is what I talked about, the cutting force. So when I did that example I showed in my video, I used a first pass with a lighter cutting force of five, and the next pass had a cutting force of 15. So that seemed to work well. It might have been even a little high for that drafting film I was using. Uh, if you're using something else, you might need, like if you're using the transparency film, these need to be increased quite a bit. Um, so the defaults... I think are eight and 30, which worked for the transparency film, but I'm using five and 15. Um, and you'll also need to set up the, the name of the printer on your shared network. So in this case, this is my computer and then the printer share. Uh, so if you had your printer on some other computer, you know, whatever its name is. All right, so that's it, so good luck. Um, and that's how I use the Silhouette Cameo to create some stencils.